Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. You're not doing it with me. It's not as it's not as grand as this. You didn't tell me you wanted me to do this, Matt. Come on. <laughs> Any comms. Come on. Well, we, got, we got good comms here on the desk. Again, I am your one of your hosts here today. I'm Daniil Brown, also known as Ben Tricky, joined by Owen, uh, also known as Hybrid Mantha. We're getting ready for the Swiss round one. It's okay. Sorry, I dropped my team it's sheet. It's a team sheet. Sorry. And speaking of team sheet, you know what? This is a good segue into what we're about to see yeah. and what we're about to witness here in game one on the pools, the Swiss pools, bracket, whatever you want to call it. We have the first round coming up. We're going to have Tyler Levine versus Luca Tregoat, and it's going to be an incredible battle. I'm just, I'm blown away because the first Pokemon we both saw on this team sheet on Tyler's side is a Blastoise. Yeah, some interesting choices, obviously, right here. Tyler is bringing in a Blastoise, um, has a Metagross, uh, so obviously, you know, some, some like, decent, uh, but just a little bit weird choices. Mm -hmm. Tyler is bringing in a Blastoise, but doesn't have any Rain Setters yeah, on rain the team. Yeah, Dish, most notably. Um, so, Rain Dish, if you're not aware, it does mm -hmm. heal you, I believe, 1 16th per turn, or it's either 1 8th or 1 16th per turn while you're out in rain, um, but with no Rain Setters, I feel like it's more of like a this Pokemon is more like a leech, you know. You try yeah, to it, let it. It's more. It's more to like try and play off of, I guess, other maybe yeah. like rain teams and whatnot. It, it's an interesting pick, and we'll see how um, they sort of play into it. Um, Luke. What's up? Sorry, it's kind of like how you, with your Fergaraf, you run Expanding Terrain without running any... Expanding, expanding Force? Yeah, that force. is true. On my team that I do use, I run a Fergaraf. <laughs> Instead of using Psychic, I use Expanding Force. I don't have any Psychic exactly. Terrain, like, Pokemon on my team. But it's only... It's like 10 less base power. It's, yeah, it's, with, not, it's not that much of a trade-off. And if, you know, like, Expanding... Uh, if Psychic Terrain does to come out, then boom, I win. The obvious, like... Sorry, well, I'll, I'll go to your next point after this, but just on the Blast Toys point, obviously, like, a better... or the most standard choice would probably be the Wellspring Ogre Pond. But, you know, that doesn't have Icy Wind, which this Blastoise does. Rapid Spin as well. Or, no, Flip Turn, sorry. Flip yeah. Turn and Icy Wind, I feel like are both pretty decent mm -hmm. moves here that cause problems. We're both talking about the kind of Pokemon we favor oh. in our lineups. Oh, we're getting into the battle immediately. I was I was so lost in your eyes over there. I didn't even notice. But we're going to see the battle right away with the Blastoise leading off. It is something that you have to pay attention to. Leaving it to do its own thing will end up causing problems with your team. That Icy Wind will be... An issue. Yeah. Urshfu immediately goes for the U-turn. This matchup probably doesn't fare pretty well for them. So, you know, U-turns, pivots, tries to get back out. We'll see what they kind of lead for. They lead with going back to King Gambit. Mm. So... Um, you know, pretty good switch right there. Obviously, you don't want that Urshifu uh, single strikes to go up against that Metagross. It's not really a good, Ooh. favorable matchup for them. Psychic Fangs comes out, and Amoogus is pretty low, but it's fine that Citrus Berry is going to come in and heal it up for a good portion of damage. Uh, sorry, a good portion of health. Blastoise with the Icy Wind for See? that speed control. But you do have to keep in mind, Amoogus and King Gamma are probably the slowest Pokemon <laughs> on the field anyways. Um, right. So the speed control doesn't really matter too much in that aspect. Yeah, but naturally, with naturally. the King Gambit, it is actually going to be boosting its speed, exactly. which now actually might be outspeeding. The Spore is going to go on to the Metagross, which could be a problem if you are Tyler. Uh, some switch outs, maybe, you want to start seeing to come out, but I'm not sure what the most optimal play here is. I think both of these players are still relatively unfamiliar and unsure with what their opponent's going to want to do, so they're still just trying to play and feel yeah. it out right now. Yeah, the first game of the set, you kind of want to feel out, see what your opponent's going to do. You want, don't want to give them the, your entire game plan just right away. You want to sort of feel out how the set is going to play out, right? Um, so we'll kind of see what's going on here. Obviously, we saw what Luca's trying to go for. He's trying to go for uh, another sleep onto the Blastoise, trying to go for the Kowtow Cleave on the Metagross. Um, so we'll see come, what's come through here. Obviously, Metagross is not going to come back up. Flip Turn comes out through Blastoise. Okay. Blastoise is going to pivot out. So we'll see what comes in for them. I'm slowly loving this Blastoise pick more and more. I think it offers something very unique. Um, with that flip turn, Icy Wind, etc. Now you have the Instant Aurora coming out, which Ooh, is going to be boosting the King Gamma's attack. Yeah, this, this is definitely a very strange pick to like to happen. Obviously, like you know, Defiant is going to just take full advantage of that Instant Aurora to come out. Of course, the Instant Aurora comes out to sort of get that damage off onto um, onto the King Gamut. You don't want King Gamut to sort of spiral out of control. Um, so it makes sense. You know that King Gamut's going to target Metagross. You come in. It does get that attack boost, sure. But I don't know if it's... Look at that. Safety goggles. I've been saying Boom. It. I've Beautiful. Been saying it. Yes. Goggles on Incineroar. I, I think our first cast was like, why aren't people doing that? We're seeing it now. We're seeing it now. I love it. 
it's such a good move. It helps allow your Incineroar to actually have an effect outside of just its setting Intimidate. Being able to use the other moves is a big part of what makes this Pokemon so strong. Now we're going to see the Fluttermane coming in, and I think here we're going to start seeing some action coming out on the side of Tyler with that King Gambit so heavily yeah. boosted. I think it's already at max attack. Mm -hmm. um, it, well, it's not at max attack. It's at two times boost of attack, um, but that's still it's a, a sharp good... Boost, I think. Pardon? It's a sharp boost per stat lowered, so it's got the speed lowered and it got the attack lowered, so it might be at four. I'm not sure. Well, you have to think it gets lowered, so it gets a sharp boost, but it only counts as plus one. So, so it's at plus two. Okay. In any case, it's strong. Yeah, math was in your strong suit in high school, for sure. I, uh, definitely not. Pokemon was. Yeah. That's part of the reason why math was in my strong suit. So the Incineroar, saying, like, yeah. sorry, if you, um, my bad. The Incineroar pick <laughs> coming out here is obviously great, you know. Um, both Pokemon in the field are super weak to Incineroar, so you don't want to, you know. Um, obviously, the Ar Ar Arcanine is going to come out too, and Int Intimidate is going to go on on both the Incineroar and the Fluttermane. Um, going to also get that dub quad resistance to uh, Incineroar as well. Yeah. One thing I like about, yeah, you see the Fluttermane going for Protect, Seeking King Gamut going for the Protect. That's a smart move. Obviously, you don't want the Heat Crash, right, to come through, or, or Flare Bits they're running. Sorry. Um, the Fluttermane, though, I wanted to touch on the Fluttermane pre game. I just, we just didn't get really a chance to. Fluttermane, Speed Booster, right? has, uh, oh my gosh, I wasn't even, I wasn't paying attention. Sorry, um, has, oh my gosh, I'm tripping. I'm trying to find like its moveset. I just can't see it. Oh, right there, there you go. Calm mind, protect, but two, it's, it's just trying to lean into like being super offensive mm. for that flutter main, right? Yeah. You got the speed boost, you got the calm mind. So it's gonna hopefully try and take advantage of that. Hopefully both Pokemon do lean into the Incineroar as you sort of, Kind of see oh, that's not going to happen, right? King Gambit or King Gambit's going to lean out. into the Fluttermane. The Fluttermane's going out, going into the Blastoise. Oh, he's back! It's your favorite Pokemon. One of them. One of them. War Turtles is more of my favorite. But with this Blastoise coming back out, that would be a double weakness on the Water type moves against the uh, Arcanine. Uh, he's sweet. Parting shot is going to lower his stats as the Incineroar switches out. This is, this is, I like this team. You're seeing a lot of switching out coming through here. Um, the Fluttermane is going to be coming back in off of the parting shot from the Incineroar. Uh, and we're going to see now, I think your point to before about targeting the King Gambit with Smart and not targeting it because it's the most likely target. Eventually, you're going to have to want to do something about it as you lose your Blastoise now to the Kowtow Cleave with this boosted attack on this King Gambit. It is quite a big threat so far. With the Incineroar coming out, it's going to lower one stat, but it's going to boost the stack, even the attack stat even more now, and this King Gambit is going to be even scarier. Both Pokemon on the side of Luka's side are really, really healthy. There's not a lot of stuff you can do to kind of chunk them out immediately. Yeah. Fluttermane is probably your strongest attacker here, and it's going to be very vulnerable to both these Lucas pretty much got this game in the bag. I think Tyler was too worried about pivoting too much and not worried about like the damage output. I do like, like I said, the Fluttermane having a uh, calm mind there to, for the setup, right? Um, but you don't have any Pokemon for redirection, if I'm... Actually, you do. You have the Amoongus, you have the Hydrapple. Oh, that's that's on Lucas' side, sorry. They have no, on for Tyler, has no redirection Pokemon, right? So Calm Mind is a, is a cool strat. It is a good strat for the most part, right? But if they target um, Fluttermane, it doesn't really do well. Yeah. As you see, Luka wins the battle 4-1. to one. Pretty one-sided. Pretty one-sided indeed. Did not drop a single Pokemon there. But like we were kind of hinting at before, the first battle is always an information gathering one. You want to play as well as you can, but you don't want to give away too much of your strategies. And you can't play too well because you don't know too much about your opponent's team. You can't make as very efficient predictions yeah. as you normally or otherwise would be able to. We, they don't have the benefit of seeing the team sheets like we do on the battlefield. So it's a little bit riskier of a play. And you have to play pretty conservatively without throwing away your entire game plan. Well, that's the benefit of the best of three, right? Exactly. You get the first game to sort of feel it out. And then the next two, you can sort of change up your strategy you know, change up your ideas of what you want to do and then go for it, right? We have Luca again, like I said, two regener regenerator Pokemon. Yeah. It, it gives you a ton of different options. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how Tyler sort of comes back um, and, you know, reassesses his game plan going into this next game. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on what we might be seeing next uh, for Tyler into this next game. Uh, I feel like the Pokemon, the... <sighs> There was, there was the idea there, 
but I felt like there wasn't a lot of substance. They did there wasn't leading to like a major uh, mm-hmm. Pokemon to kind of set your game plan in motion. It was just a lot of not necessarily support, but fluff. I feel like when we're seeing the next round, what Pokemon do you think we're going to be seeing switched out, if any? I think uh, we're most likely going to be seeing the Landorus. I think you'll see the Orlando Eye. I think you might see the Metagross maybe come back as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm not too sure, specifically. I don't think Blastoise really did anything that well. Yeah. If you bring back King Gambit, Icy Wind doesn't really, like benefit you at all. <laughs> it doesn't really help that icy wind turn didn't really help you that much because a Amoongus is super slow and tanky so it's going to yes, take that yeah. damage and like if king gambit comes out cool i get a plus one speed boost this is amazing for me this so is, i was wrong so that's contrary contrary is where whatever would be reversed uh will be on um, boosted instead define is anytime a stats lowered you get a sharp boost to your attack so that's that's speed reduction yeah but you get a sharp you, sharp boost you get attack. lowered but then you get a sharp boost so, so it, it inevitably ends up just being plus one Right, no, but the the speed lowering didn't raise the speed; it just raised the attack times two. So, oh yeah, wait, I'm, I'm saying it always raises attack. It's always the attack. It's not the speed that's getting. Yeah, we're a bit so. slow. We're a bit silly. <laughs> <laughs> so that King Gambit was really strong. As we're seeing the first yeah. turn coming out here, the grassy terrain already set up. The Rillaboom was one of the Pokemon I was expecting to see on the side of Tyler, and we are seeing the lander. Yeah. So, hey. Complete on, switch up on Tyler's it. side, right? It. Didn't even bring Lando Eye or Rillaboom last game and now brought both of them and leads with both of them. Um, so, you know, pretty good switch up. Um, on the side of Luka, though, Luka brings out uh, Chen Pao, brought out Urshifu, and then immediately swaps it back out. Um, the Chen Pao is going to be super dangerous to Lando Eye, especially um, if they choose not to Drastalize. Tyler goes for the Drastalization on Lando Eye, though, with the. Uh, sorry, that's the ghost type uh, Drastalization, right? Or is that poison? That looks like that's poison. poison. Yeah, yeah, that's poison. Gen Pao goes for the protect. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, and yeah, we did uh, forget to mention Luca did bring out the Hydrapple. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, pretty nice. Pretty nice. Yeah, the Hydrapple is one of the weirder mods that we don't get to see very Ooh. often. The fickle beam. Oh my God! That the read on that. Lando I goes for the sludge bomb. Hydrapple comes oh. out and takes so much damage right there. It's brutal. Yeah, the grass typing here not going to be very helpful in resisting that. Landorus is now with that poison terrestrialization. You're going to have to completely change up your offensive strategy here. Ice typing isn't going to be very effective at, you know, chunking it down. Your Chien Pao went from being a huge threat to just being another Pokemon on the field. Rillaboom, of course, still going to be facing that threat. Ice Spinner You say that, though, but terrain. Ice Spinner comes out and yeah. Rillaboom's going to just get knocked out right there. You got to remember, Chien Pao is one of the strongest Pokemon 100%. in the format, just in, in pure attacking power. I just feel like this Landorus is a bit more of a threat right now. That's my point. Very true. The Sludge Bomb is going to come through, obviously take out uh, the, uh, what's it called, the Hydrapple. I know it's not going to be able to live on 30 <laughs> HP for sure. Hydrapple falls. Now we're pretty even um, as we're, you know, one for one traded. Everyone has three right now. Luka uh -oh. probably should bring out, uh, I would say bring out the Urshifu, especially because Amoongus, again, is uh, like resistant to Sludge Bomb. Uh, um, sort of. I would have brought out the Urshifu. What were, I, what were your I, thoughts? I like the Amoongus here because... Yeah. This allows you to have enough oh. extraction uh, for your Chien Pao yeah. causes more havoc. And then if they spend a lot of resources to get your Chien Pao, you still have the Urshifu in the tank. Yeah. Whereas if you have both of them out, you lose one of them, it's not that favorable for you. So the Sucker Punch is going to come out most likely yeah, onto that Metagross and then the Spore maybe? Or Amoongus onto the Landers or anything else? Uh, it's using Rage Powder. I like rage that powder. I like that. If you're Luka though, you really do need to go for the Rage Powder, right? You have Amoongus who isn't super super strong right chen pao is your strongest pokemon right here obviously you have urshifu in the back line but urshifu doesn't really do well against metagross doesn't do that well against lando eye especially with the terrestrialization right so good move right here going for that sucker punch comes through doesn't do that much damage though yeah i think it yeah colder berry yeah. on that metagross can reduce the uh, damage that it's going to take there Munga is going to take some beatings. Sludge Bomb, thankfully, it's going to be able to resist that one, or at least be neutral. Not fully oh, resist, but neutral. Yeah, neutral. Oh, 8 HP. The Citrus Berry comes out through. But... Another turn of Amoongus so we're going to have to deal with. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's not what you want to see if you are, Tyler. Really hoping to get that wiped out. Metagross is not going to be able to resist the Sucker Punch twice in a row here, so it might not go down, but it's definitely not going to be very happy to take this. Yeah, no, for sure. I think it does have a potential of going down, though. Like, you did have the Chen berry Pao that is very strong. Is very strong. Uh, the berry did weaken that attack, and it almost did about half. So, there is a good chance that it can go down here. 
Um, not if, yeah, meta, not if it protects though. Metagross going for the protect. The Sucker Punch isn't going to be able to connect. And the Moongus is just going to fall, right? Because the Moongus is way slower than Lando Eye. Lando Eye is going to be able to get that Sludge Bomb take out a Moongus. Right now, we will... Be, oh, actually, Sludge Bomb going oh, on Chen Pao. On the Chen Pao. It's very interesting. That's honestly a very smart move too. Now that Chen Pao's just at 1 HP. Can't get anything to go, but Spore comes through. Now Lando Eye is kind of just rendered useless. Rendered useless, but... Yeah, it's gonna be. It's it's full HP. Full and HP is sleep. Typing, so mm -hmm. it doesn't really. If I'm not wrong, I don't think that Luca has any very threatening moves against this lander. So he might actually be able to wake up and cause some more havoc. Either way, you have a bigger threat on the field right in front of you in a Metagross. So I don't think you want to be committing turns into the sleeping landers right now. It's just more so of a I don't want to deal with this right now. Sleep instead of uh, kill sleep. Well, it's probably the best, like, best way to go, to be honest. It's probably the best way to go. But, like, Lando Eye is probably the biggest threat on the field right now. You don't have any Pokemon that can do super effective damage to it. You don't have a Psychic Sight. You don't yeah. have anybody with any Earth moves or any Ground moves, sorry. Um, but, yeah. Good Sleep move. The Sucker Punch comes through, takes down the Metagross. Good turn from Luka right there. Lando's still going to be sleeping. And, yeah, no, pretty solid. Yeah, Spore, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> with the Metagross going down, is going to do nothing. But what else is Yermung is going to do? All it, It's a Spore machine, Fluttermane now, coming out on the side of Tyler. And this is where you really have to hunker down and figure things out. Because now, with the uh, Dazzling Gleam, which I would be surprised if this uh, Fluttermane is not running, which, thankfully, it is running. It's definitely so running. Definitely. It's going to be yeah. wiping the rest of the field, and it's just going to be an Urshifu left on the side of Luka. So you really have to consider your next steps here if you're Luca. What do you want to get out of this turn? And can you reasonably get that option out? I really don't think there is a lot. I mean, you're really just praying that Sucker Punch does like one hit not. Oh, I guess not. Not going for the Fluttermane. I was going to say you're really praying that Sucker Punch does like one hit KO Fluttermane. It does have very low physical defense. So like there's a possibility. Uh, but yeah, Dazzling is going to come out, pick up Chen Pao. Muga still does end up living on. Um, but yeah, no, not a good turn, obviously, for Shen Bao. And when it comes down to it, the Urshifu coming out here, fighting type moves will not even be able to work on the Flutter Bane, so that's even a limited, more of a limited moveset. But the Spore coming out, forcing you to sleep, buys some more time for Luka to figure out how he wants to deal with these two threats. Uh, it has a Choice Scarf, so... It's just off the Urshifu, he's gonna be locked into moves. The yeah. speed boost doesn't really help, though, because both of them are sleeping, right? Yeah! So it's a threat. You, you, you're really committing to the move that you think is going to help you win the entire game. You have this one turn to figure it out. Uh, it's, it's a scary situation, but it's definitely manageable. If the Landorus is not already awake, it will most likely be waking up this turn. Wasn't tracking the amount of sleep turns it had. But oh, look at it. It's so, sweet. so cute it's so when sweet. it's sleeping. Yes, because you don't have to worry about the nonsense that it throws out at you. But as we're seeing the terrestrialization coming out to the Urshifu, it's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be the water terrestrialization, yeah. right? You're going to try to get like as much damage output as you possibly can from the Rapid Strikes. Um, so Rage Powder comes through in Amoongus just in case if Lando Eye does end up waking up. So, you know, good move from them for sure. Because like you said, it's been about two, maybe three turns possibly that Lando Eye has been asleep. So this is probably about the time where they're going to wake up. Surging Strikes comes through. It's probably going to pick up the knockout on Fluttermane. It's going to be very close, but it's going to pick up the knockout on Fluttermane for sure. Yeah. That Fluttermane is gone and out of it with Landorus, the last Pokemon remaining. This is... I really thought it was kind of over when, uh, when the Fluttermane came in. But with the careful play that Luka has been making, able to salvage oh, this Lando oh. This might just be it. It might be for sure. What, what's faster? Lando, I, yeah. Okay. It's over. Yeah, it's over. It's over. Luka <laughs> takes a set 2-0. Great play from Luka, though, to be fair. That Amoogus kind of came in clutch towards the end, putting both to sleep. And I got to say, I despise Amoogus. I, I despise it as well, and uh, you're just, your amount of despising Amoongus is rubbed off on me, so we both kind of despise it even more. <laughs> it's such a strong Pokemon, and you can see here how it worked out in this video. Yeah, and now you see, you know, both two competitors saying GG to each other, gonna go on to their next Great match sportsmanship. now. Great sportsmanship. <laughs> for sure. Uh, what was your favorite part about this match, though? 
I want to say the Blastoise, but I didn't get to really see it do anything. I, like we were talking about before, now we actually have the time to yap as both. We love yapping. You'll we love gonna, yapping. Yapping is our specialty. It. You're going to endure it now. So I'm a big fan of generalists mm -hmm. in Pokemon, and I feel like Blastoise is one of them. That Blastoise being able to just sit there and continually dish out annoyances. Yeah. Again, it's not an Ogre Pond. It's not an Instant Aurora. It's not a huge major threat. So your, your opponent's not likely to sit and commit a lot of important things to getting rid of it, mm -hmm. which allows it to be even more of a problem. <laughs> because it realistically, dealing with... The Blastoise is not a very smart thing to do. Like there are bigger threats, but yeah. it it's kind of like a support mod in the sense that it makes life easier for your actual threats, but it's still causing problems directly instead of you know just taking mm -hmm. hits. So Pokemon like that and the way they're used, I really like that kind of play style, but we didn't get to really see it flourish because that first turn yeah. where it's Icy Winding, a Defiant King Gambit, it's just, what like what, what can you really do? It's a Namungus, King Gambit start, it's never going to work in your favor in that sense. Yeah. It was also just a super niche pick as well. It was kind of like a, uh, how do you say, like a counterplay pick towards like other rain teams, you yeah. know? Leech, it, I call it leeching. Leeching. Okay, yes. cool. Well, we'll call it. It's a leech pick to other rain teams. Uh, it's interesting to see that it did come out, right? This blast is very tanky, obviously super tanky. Doesn't have that crazy of damage output, you mm -hmm. know, compared to other mons like like you see all the time, like Ogre Pong and whatnot. Um, doesn't have like super high damage output on that aspect, mm -hmm. but. Um, you know, it, it's its whole job, it wants to, like, stall. It wants to protect, right. it wants to flip turn, it wants to try and exactly. pivot and try and get out. But I feel like there's way better pivot mods that you can be using, right? Like, you have, like, for example, Incineroar. Are there? You yeah, have well, Incineroar yeah. on your team already, right? But already it, it's, it, it's, it takes so much more from so much more. Like, it's, it's a lot squishier, is my point. The Blastoise is able to take a lot more than an Incineroar can. Or maybe I'm wrong on that in this format. What are your thoughts on that? Ogre Pong. Yeah, but Incineroar is... Ivy Cudgel. Yeah, but... Okay, sure. Yeah, Grass Sight move. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... It's, it's, it would it, be water it's, type. it's dependent. It's dependent on what mask you hold. Okay, but yeah, everyone's Wellspringing, so it would be a water type move. A hit Not every. It's not like, like Wellspring, Heart Flame. Yesterday, like, you know, to, Apparently, like, to yeah. what you're saying, we saw some Teal Ogre Pong, which is a pretty off, like, niche pick. Mm -hmm. um, you saw some... We saw Cornerstone. Ogre Pong yesterday. Oh, what type is that one? Uh, that's the rock type one. Okay. It, so for those who don't know, Ogre Pong Cornerstone has Sturdy, but it doesn't really get the <laughs> chance to use Sturdy, right? Because it's super bulky. Yeah. So it kind of just has a useless a ability. ability. Yeah. Until you draw slides and you get like defensive boost or whatever, but it's just like there's uh, there's better Ogre Pong um, out there for sure. Well, Spring seems to be the favorable one because again, Water is such a great defensive typing. It's so much yeah. more flexible than the other more specific ones. You know, it's not weak to fighting. Yeah. Like the one and, and it's just like it's such a like versatile Pokemon, right? If you want to go on the defensive, super supportive side, you can go Wellspring. If you want to go like high damage output, obviously you can have the Hearth Flame Ogre Pong. Uh, it just really depends on like what role you want Ogre Pong to fit on your team. Yeah, and that brings me back full circle to my initial point about Tyler's team and why I like it so much is it feels like a very generalist team. There's not a lot about that team that's very specific to a specific play style, yeah. but it allows you to kind of adapt and play around your opponent in any given situation and feel comfortable doing so. So it has a Blastoise, Incineroar, Incineroar is always good. Landorus uh, I with the uh, poison terrestrialization and throwing out a sludge bomb, like who does that? But it worked and it allows you to do a lot. It didn't end up mm -hmm in that set, but it came very close. Um, Flutter made, just solid special sweeper. Rillaboom, mm, I, I'm not too, you know, Flake Out, the Grassy Slide and stuff like that. It's just a strong Pokemon you have to deal with. It is definitely good, but when I think about the generalist Pokemon, it's not the one I'm looking at, but I love the Metagross pick. I love the Metagross. Again, I wasn't paying too much attention to it. And again, when I say I love it, I don't just mean it was the greatest for the matchup, but I really like the idea that you're going for. Just solid, skirmishy, like that's, you're, you're comfortable fighting in any circumstance. That's the kind of team that I really like. And I feel like Tyler's team didn't have the chance to really put that uh, like in the spotlight, but yeah. it worked out very well. Okay. As yeah, well yeah, as it could have. For, sure. <laughs> for sure. Anyways, uh, it was great watching that game, but we are going to head to a break and hopefully very shortly, we'll be back to you with the next game. See you guys soon.